Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'd like to start a new project. Now, a little while ago I made a Japanese rice bag where I explored for the first time sashiko and I loved it. Now these pieces were um, put onto the fabric with a pen and a stencil. There's heaps of ways of getting patterns onto fabrics to do this type of stitching. Uh, another way is using carbon paper and you put your design, your carbon paper and your fabric and using a stylist, I think I've got one here, yeah I do, a stylist with a bit of a ball on the end, um, you can trace around your image and then the it's not even chalk. I kept calling it chalk, but it's not. I'm going to grab the paper. One moment. I've been watching a lot of videos trying to understand the techniques and the different things they use in the way of tools. And I've been buying bits and pieces from Bitten by the Bug, which is an Australian company that has lots of uh, Japanese threads and fabrics and stencils and they also sell this paper now it's got a, a name but i'm not gonna say it because it's yeah i just don't want to get it wrong it's charcoal paper now i remember seeing this years ago so it's nothing new and what it is is a sheet of paper with charcoal in a color on it now the lady that demonstrates it from bitten by the bug she, um, she, once you own it, you own it forever. It's just, it's the gift that keeps giving. So it'd be an investment and then you'd have it. So it's a case of the image would sit on top of this, like that. Put your pretty picture here. And then using your stylus for your fabric underneath, you trace around and the lines appear on your fabric. So that's the way that they get images onto panels that aren't pre-printed. Now if you want to do sashiko that is lots of geometrical lines like this, you'd use this and a ruler and away you go. So you can sort of even get yourself a sashiko book of patterns that are very geometric if that's the style you like and away you go. So have a look around for the charcoal paper. Um, I'll put the name of the paper in the description. It's Chaco, C-H-A-C-O, there it is on the bottom. But there is a Japanese word too, but there you go. C-H-A-C-O, paper. Okay, it's washable, it's charcoal base, lots of different colours, and apparently once you own it, you'll own it forever. You don't ever, you know, finish it. And this is a lady talking um, about... Um, how often she uses it and a lot because her whole business is based on this style of stitching. So this, this little bag here just was an absolute delight to make. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I found that it sort of, I got a little bit of me in there with the piecings of fabrics and things like that because I've got a very small collection of Japanese fabrics. Some of them are really, really yummy, and I got um, a 30 centimeter piece of it. So I've also got those in a container as well. But these are like little, just little morsels. There's some indigo dyed pieces, and then just some random Japanese fabrics. And as you can see, I really like the, the navies and the blues. So after having done that, and you guys made a lot of rice bags too, just in your own styles, whether it be something traditional like this or shabby chic Christmas, like it was amazing. So, and I mentioned in that series that I had some pre-printed panels, well this is them. I've picked them up over the last 18 months, various locations. Um, they're pretty much in most quilt stores now. And if you just go to Etsy and type in Shashiko panel, there's heaps. I think this one is an old one. Now I got this one at a shop that is no longer trading. It was only 12 months ago, but the shop has closed down. They have got an online presence, but there's a bit of a message on there saying um, no longer taking orders. So I just 
don't know what's happening there. I won't mention the name of the shop because there's no use going and checking it out. But it's called, and it doesn't even say on this, it took me ages to find it. It's Bird on the Cherry Blossom. Now, see, there's one little bird here. Bird on a Cherry Blossom. Okay, so if you type that into Etsy or Google, you might find one, but don't hold your breath because, yeah, really struggled. There is a um, email address here. I'll put all of these descriptions in the... Um, I, I didn't actually... I didn't look at that name. Let me just quickly Google it and see if it leads us to a website. Maybe. But I have a feeling that they're probably the wholesaler. Hey, Jim Textiles. Okay. Indigo Niche. Now, Indigo Niche, there it is. There it is. So that there has directed me to Indigo Niche. Now, I think I've seen them on Etsy as well. And she does YouTube. Bird on the Cherry Blossom, $44. There you go. Now, is that Australian? Is that... American that I don't know. So there's two birds, two but three butterflies, four butterflies. Okay, so that's good news. You can get the panel. This panel here, let me bring it up, seems to be the new one. And it's huge. There's three panels there. And is it going to let me zoom in? And they've stitched it with this pink, which is sort of what's given me a bit of an idea. I don't know if I can get that up. There we go. There it is. See that? There's stitching of pink in amongst it. So that, when I saw that, I thought, I think I know what I'm going to do with my panel. So that's my inspiration. Now, this panel is available, and I think it's the new one, but I don't know. Like, you might have to do a bit of research. It's huge. I don't know what you'd do with it. You'd have to make it into a, a quilt or something. But it's beautiful. See how they've brought fabric into, into the design? I really like that. I even like how there's petals floating around. So, which is so me, you know, doing something. I better take a screenshot of that while I've got it. And that can be... The inspiration let's just um, save that so if I get stuck that's where I'm heading whether that's a kit I don't know but that's this piece now we'll open them up in a minute then I have this one and then I have this one which is um, and some sashiko thread now I haven't opened it yet I haven't even played with it because I'm really nervous but I've watched a lot of videos now, so I think I know how to process it to get it ready for stitching. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start with this big guy. My problem is I can't decide which one to do. I just don't know because I don't know if I should be safe and do a little one. Or this one here I think I could be creative with. I'll show you in a moment. And this one here is like major. And I'm like itching to get into it. So what they seem to be are pre-printed with wash out ink or chalk. So once this is completed, you can wet it and it disappears, leaving your work. So I thought that was lovely. So if I am a little bit off on my stitches, doesn't really matter because it's going to disappear. So this panel is huge. So one cube if you will where's my little my little pull out tape measure or are you i found this fantastic little tape measure that you pull it out press the button and zips back in i'm so sick of winding up tape measures this is it here i found it in my cupboard and i thought you are coming to my room so the image 13 inches by 
14, 15 inches. And then there's um, one, two, so there's this butterfly. I've got it upside down, I think. Have I got it upside down? No. So there's this butterfly panel. There's the blossom panel. Then you flip it over. And there's a bird blossoms. And then the two at the top. So it's six panels. I'm pleased it's still available. So if you guys did want to track one down, you should be able to find it. So that is the panel isn't it just gorgeous my thought was bringing fabrics into it so in my head I had all of these fabrics because that's what I've got in the Japanese category of fabrics and I, my thought was to bring in little morsels of it everywhere and sort of thicken it up with lots of different textures and have the the bird and the flowers all coming behind then I started thinking about color would I where's my project box here would I bring in some colors I think cherry blossoms are sort of ready pink to sort of highlight the flowers so that's where I was heading with it and then there's this bird and I thought well I could probably play with him a little bit too and do him in a different color I don't have much of this thread so I was thinking I would go down the lines of just using pearl cotton. Now, in all the videos I've watched, they talk about threads. And this is, of course, the common one. But then a lot say you can just use this. As long as it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, just helps with the thread flowing through the fabric. They don't seem to use stranded cotton. So pearl um, number eight, cream cotton, pearl cotton. So commonly available, which is good because I have that in a lot of colors. So if I'm going to do color, this is the panel for me. You can use number 12. Um, I think I might have a number 12 here somewhere. No, I don't. It's the finer one. But then using the thread, which also comes in three thicknesses, they sometimes double them. That seemed challenging to me because they like it to sit perfectly flat side by side and I'm like oh my goodness the last thing I need is that technical detail hanging over me I just want to get in there and go for it you know bullet a gate style so that's where I'm at with this project now having found last night this project with the pinks in it it sent me off on another rabbit hole. So I went to my cupboard and the only pink I found that I liked was this fabric. Now, is it the right fabric? I don't know. Because I've only really dawned on this literally last night, I really need to do a little bit of research. Now, I remember when I was making this bag, um... Another YouTuber, Leanne. Now, oh gosh, Leanne, I never... I've just got to get your your channel into my head so that it just comes off the top of my head. Let me go to YouTube. She's in my search list. Where are you? Leanne's Crafty Cupboard. So Leanne went to a, a quilters fair in Melbourne and she bought herself some Japanese pale pink beautiful fabrics from... East Meets West, which is a Etsy store who have also printed panels, the cottons. She bought the pale pink cottons. Oh, beautiful. And at the time I was working on this project, I was filming this project and I started banging on about those pinks. And in my head, this panel was printed on this colored fabric. And straight away, my head was buzzing I was like oh Leanne if I got those pink tones on my panel this one um I could do a layered fabric a cherry blossom with the sashiko stitching in around it and it would become quite a textured piece so long story short when I finally got around to digging out these pieces it's on blue so I crashed. I was like, I spent three days 
nearly moping. <laughs> you know when you've got a project in your head and then you start gathering everything, you're like, oh, it's not the right colour. So that's what happened. And I popped it to one side. I'm like, bugger it. Now it's blue, blue and white. How boring. What am I going to do? And I chewed on it for about three or four days, actually. Then I started looking to see if the panel was available and I struggled to find it anywhere where I'm bringing you up to where we are at this stage and I thought oh now I'm going to be showing you a panel that's not even out there how do we proceed anyway long story short um, now that I have found that is available I feel a little bit better about the project and in the process I found that that image there and we're on blue with the white and the pink so it's going to work I don't know why I didn't just you know go looking for suggestions so at the moment the plan is stitch it in the white uh, sorry the cream because I can get a lot of this thread at a pretty good price so I'm going to do it in the cream I'm going to at some point bring in pinks I don't know where yet so I'm just going to put the colors away and at the moment this is the only fabric that I feel is subtle enough to be on this print because the print is really really small and it's got a little round flower which sort of feels to me that it's similar styling to this now I don't think it's Japanese which is another thing that's bugging me about it I have a feeling I may have just picked this up at Spotlight, but I don't know. Bloomin' Fabric. It has a sister that was in there with it. I'll go digging. Maybe there's another one. I have a feeling there used to be a cream as well, but maybe I've used it. And I think they were like a little set of three with a cream. But I need to go digging further because, yeah, it's probably just lost its little sister, gone elsewhere. So these are the fabrics I've put aside. I don't know if I'll use them yet. What I want to do while I'm getting the basics stitched here is just go looking to see what pinks are out there because I want to have a look at what Leanne picked from um, East Meets West. Because uh, when I looked originally, when Leanne first got back from the fair and showed her um, purchases, let me link that as well. Let me get pen and paper and make some notes here. So in the description, I will link the details. Where's my pencil? The details about the panel. If I don't write this down, it'll, it'll just slip my mind. Um, I'll also link Leanne's Etsy and um, yeah well it's not an Etsy share it's when she went to the fair in Melbourne the big quilt fair so link Leanne's quilt purchases from fair okay so you can have a look at this pink thing that's in my brain good on you Leanne <laughs> she's a treasure that girl showing me things that I shouldn't be seeing and sending me down other rabbit holes that I shouldn't be going down. So that's the panel that I'm going to be making. Now in amongst my procrastinating about the whole bloomin' thing, these little guys kept jumping out at me and I'm thinking, oh, what do I do? Do I just do that? Do I just do that? I'm starting out, I'm still learning. Let me show you this one. I've been in there, as you can see. I've been wrapping around. Now, this little guy, I think he came from the same shop as this. I haven't researched him. His name is Good News. Sashiko Cloth Good News. So, let's put the details of this guy good news and if I can find it somewhere to purchase I will link you to that business 
if I can find it. I don't know how long it was in the shop. It's only little. And it looks like I actually found a lady who was at a fair. She, I think she was Canadian. She was at a fair talking about Sashiko, like, and she had all of her products behind her. And she pulled out one of these panels with this bit to the side. Because when I unwrapped it, I'm like, well, what do I do with that? She made a cushion out of it, and this was the back of the cushion. And I thought, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So I've got this little panel as well. Now, look at the detail. Absolutely look at the detail. It's just gorgeous. So we've got some birds. There's two rabbits, two deer or stag. This floral emblem in the middle. There's a fish here, tulips. Just beautiful. So I started thinking, well, maybe I should do this because I really want to dive into this one. Then, again, what colours? How do we proceed? What do we do with it? So, yeah. Isn't it beautiful? Now, let's look at the last one. I haven't actually opened this one because I can pretty much see what it is. Now, I think they call it how to make a Japanese tea towel. So, once again... Corinne can't decide which project to do. So I thought I'm going to show you what I got. Turn on the camera, talk it through with you guys. It's 100% cotton, 31 centimeters by 31 centimeters, pre printed. Note the cloth is washable, water soluble ink, made in Japan, imported by SSS Proprietary Limited in Melbourne. Information at So Group. Dot com. How to iron it. Okay, so we've got how to make a Japanese tea towel. Oh, I don't really want a Japanese tea towel. This is just very generic. This is not anything to do with this. This is draw your lines and create your pattern some stitches, how to do your knot, take pressure off your corners. Yeah, this is if you had a blank piece of fabric and you were drawing your lines and starting. The basics starting, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a really, really lovely explanation of how to do sashiko if you have a piece of fabric and you're creating your own design so i'm going to keep that and slide it back into there now this little guy mm, hello aren't you cute oh gee that's intense isn't it Wow. Well, that's real good. I can't read that. <laughs> but it's all good. Oh, okay, so it's giving you here how I go ahead. I do this straight. Ah, oh, I know this. I know this print. There's a lady. I'll link her. Um, mum, 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 mum. Oh, what's her name? Um, I'll put geometric print. And that'll remind me. YouTube. Now, there's a, a lady who's been interviewed. She's been to Japan, trained by the masters. She's amazing. She's got the most gentle way about her. She's being interviewed by another lady. And she draws onto fabric this design and it's one of those designs that can be made bigger or smaller and once you get your basic lines in place and then do your cross lines and then your next cross lines then your itty bitty triangles you can achieve this print there's a special name for it too which oh, oh boy and she talks about when you go to stitch it there's a certain way to do it. So in this scenario, number one stitch line is straight through the center. 
Number two is this line straight through. Number three, that line. And then four starts the diamond and five finishes the diamond. Now she had some examples there where she'd use color to show you which line goes first. This is printed on the back of this little panel. And the bonus is a second piece of beautiful fabric. And if this all comes off, there's no reason why I couldn't have a go at doing a design on the back of this as well. So that's a bit of a bonus. These little kits, you get this extra piece of fabric. So this is where I'm at. We have something that is a technical thing. And if you guys wanted to follow along and have a go at this, if you've got the tracing paper and the um, a water-soluble pen. Now I've got a chalk pen. She talks about using that. She also talks about using one of these clover pens, white mark pens. You could create your own panel with that if you can't find a little kit. Uh, same scenario here. It's just different colored fabric and you find a design and away you go. And I've seen so many books out there with patterns. So there's no reason why you couldn't trace yourself a design. Now the fabrics to pick it, let's say you're going to do this from start and you're not going to buy anything new. You're gonna use what you got. So you can use your crochet cotton in cream or white or color. Um, if you've got some tracing paper, you can get an image onto your um, panel. So the only other thing you need to think about is your fabric. Now they made a comment that the fabrics need to be a little bit loose in their weave, so nothing really dense. And you'll know what I mean. Like to me, this is a dense fabric. So this is a quilt fabric and it's very dense. They're using cottons or cotton linen blends and they're just a little bit looser. So when it comes to pushing your needle through, it's very pleasant and it's not putting stress on the fibers of the threads that you're going to use. So that'd be my only comment. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at. And I've been flipping and flopping between all of these, all of these projects. And I don't know which one to do first. Um, that's, that's simple. I, I probably use the Sashiko thread on that because I only have it one 40 meters, whether that's 40 meters or not, I don't know. So in my head, that and that would be the project. The big panel, as you saw earlier, I think I want to add fabric to it and collage on top of it because it's a great big space to work. This little guy, let me get my pens out of the way. This little fellow, um, I grabbed out a blue thinking that, well, I stitch it in blue. And then I'm thinking, well, that's pretty much the same as that. That's not very exciting. So then I started thinking, well, what if I went and found some more blues? Because I really love that turquoise. And because there's things happening in it, I could do, you know, a fish turquoise, the rabbits in pale of blue, the flower, you know, I could have a bit of a play with this. So this became another choice project. This was the piece of paper that came with this panel. What does that tell me? Looks like these are like generic. Okay, so there's the good news. So yeah, this cloth is 85% cotton and 15% linen. So yeah, if you're creating your very own image to stitch along with, um, make sure your cotton is not too tight and even if it had a little bit of linen in it. So this is, yeah, this is just generic. This is not telling me anything. This is where they start 
and finish without a knot. So traditionally, you'll see a lot of videos talk about doing this where you weave your thread in over the existing thread, whether you're finishing or starting, both scenarios are, uh, or joining a thread. You've run out of thread like the bottom one. You've been coming along, then you pick up your new thread and away you go. Now, the lady who's done a lot of study, um, she prefers the knot, which I thought was interesting because back when the stitching was done on the farmer's clothing to repair or decorate or, you know, build new cloths out of worn old cloth, they used the knot, excuse me, <clears throat> because it, you don't want it coming undone. It goes out into the field and is working this piece of cloth. So she said the knot is needed to, for stability, otherwise it'll come apart. So I thought, great, because I prefer the knot. Because I noticed when I tried this, and I think I tried it on one of the little corners here. One of them I did. Yeah, here. That's, that's where I tried it. And you can see it got thick, which makes sense because you're now doing two threads instead of just the one. So it thickens it up. And she made the comment as well that, your piece, you'll know exactly where threads were changed because you can see this thickened area where the thread goes over the other thread. So I thought, beauty, I wasn't a fan of that. I didn't really like it. I didn't mind it on this because it was cream on cream. But if I had have done that on, say, this, I probably would have been a little bit disappointed with it because I really love the clean look about it. So the knotting is okay. The needles... I got three sashiko needles with these kits. I seem to have lost two of them, but I have still got found one here. They are not what I'd think is a proper sashiko needle because all of the demonstrators, the needle was at least this long. This just seems like a very strong, nice needle to me. Everyone was using longer ones because they... They stack the needle, the fibres, the thread, sorry. They stack the cloth with their needle, especially the straight lined ones. Not so much probably these, but when you don't have an image printed like, oh, no, it was printed. What am I talking about? So they'll get a, the really long needle and they'll have, you know, a heap of cloth weaving in into it and then they slowly pull it through and you'll see in her demonstration when she reproduces this she runs a thread that you know goes all the way through all on one needle she just weaves and weaves and weaves and weaves and then she pulls it through as she said it's very quick so i've only got a little one so in my travels maybe i can find a proper sashiko needle the main thing she said is it needs to be quite a, a heavy-duty needle, not a fine darning needle, because it will eventually bend, which tends to happen anyway with all my work. So there we go. So what are we going to do? I love them all. I think we're going to do them all. I think we're going to do them all. I've got a lot of basic stitching to do. Like even in this panel, there's a lot of work just getting the borders done. You know, hours of work just getting that done. So I think what we might do, yeah, what the hang? Let's, oh, I don't know. Gosh. Let's do all three in unison some are just stitching which i can then just you know how are you guys here it is we're still stitching this one i can at least show you a color that i've put somewhere and then this one i can it'll give me a little bit of time to have a think about the bird and those flowers and how we bring in some extra fabrics and things like that and even this little guy what's stopping us bringing in where's my little grab a handful of these fabrics what's stopping us you know bringing in 
some of these blues and indigos and cutting out morsels to go into it. Like if we were to trace that little petal and then cut out a tiny version and then stitch it in. So I think there's opportunity in all of it. Okay, we're making, we're making some decisions here. We're going to do all three. I'll just pop up every so often with the video to say, hey, go, this is what I'm at. If there's anything really interesting that I'm thinking of doing, I will say today I want to do this and I've had an idea. Because my problem is I don't have all my ideas yet. That's my problem. Let's be honest. I don't know which one in particular to do and I don't know how I'm doing them. So the only one that's really simple is this and it's a bit boring. <laughs> it's a bit boring so let's let's do a bit of stitching enough talking now this here to me is something I really need to take note of so the first line was right through the shape of that line there so let's let's go let's use some traditional cotton Everyone was talking about um, three different weights. Does it say anywhere? No. There is an eight here. Whether that means it's a number eight, I don't know. I'm sure we'll know by the end of the program. Okay. Now. If you decide to get yourself some authentic um, cotton, you need to prep it a certain way. Now, the lady who has studied under the masters, she cut hers and then twisted it away that it just didn't get all knotted up. Prior to doing that, she said she used to just wind it up as a ball. There we go. So what we've got is this loop. Gee, there's not much cotton there. That's not going to go far. And it's held together by this little knot here, which brings the two ends. So she cut that off. Then she, with those that cut end down here now, she cut the whole lot in half. Like so. And that is then ready to go. She then, she had two scenarios. You can get yourself a piece of the thread And you can cut it into three pieces and tie it there, there, and there. And that keeps it from, you know, knotting. So if you prefer that option, you just do a, a little tie there, a little tie there, once you've cut it, and a little tie there. And it just stops it from tangling. The other thing she did is she loosely twisted it. which just kept it together as well, like so. So there's her skein. And then she just went to where the fold was and pulled that thread and it just came out, which it is. And then when she was off and about again and she just wanted it to go into her case you know she just every so often would give it a bit of a twist to keep it from you know getting all knotted up so it's up to you 
at the moment. I don't know. I don't really want to cut that itty bitty bit because I think I'm going to need it. I saw another lady that also just threaded it back through this, which I sort of don't mind as well because that would also keep it. I'm going to do that. Put this little guy back. So it's cut in half. It's ready to go. And I've got that, you know, to keep it all together. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Let's dive into this. Let's clear the decks here a bit. I've got mess everywhere. Keep that so I know what to put in the description for you guys. Sorry, guys. I need to tidy, tidy. So I'll use the little one first. Now. See, it's fine. Now, she used two. I think I mentioned that before. She used two. And as the thread comes through, she sort of massaged it a little. Some use that silicone thread, magic thread, to prime it. Like so, running it through. But the lady who has studied in Japan, she just used her fingers to get it to lay flat. And she also did this. She said if there's any little twists left after doing that, a couple flicks of the finger and your thread is lying nice and flat. So let's have a little play here. Now, a knot. Because this is the little, the little um, piece. We can play with it a little bit. Now you can do a quilter's knot, you can wind it around your fingers, you can do whatever, a knot's a knot, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's aim to get that first. This, this fabric's really fine. It doesn't feel like this panel feels really thick. Completely different fabrics. Let's zoom in a little bit. So what we want to do is weave... Those puppy dogs of mine are having a play. They've had breakfast and now they're goosing. So you come up from the bottom. She said to another comment that if you're coming into a corner, your sashiko thread or your stitch should never cross. There's always a gap. Which makes me look at this and think, they should never meet. See how that's meeting the edge there? See, there's a line going that way and there's a line. In her comment, that would never happen. They must never meet. Which I thought was interesting because then you've got, you know, beautiful stitches on their own sitting out in the open without bumping into another stitch. So I thought that was an interesting comment. And I think that is more for when you are drawing your own pattern to stitch. She also said when she turns a corner, she like has a little bump of thread at the back of her panel, a little excess, a tiny little bump, which is just gives, just gives the, um, the fabric room to wriggle and not get all tight and pull in. My needle's too small to go too far ahead, so I need to come back. And then she said, you just tease. Oh, it is sitting. See, I was concerned that my thread wouldn't sit side by side. So you just put your finger on the knot and just ease that back out. It is, oh, that's beautiful. So two threads is okay, Corinne. Don't be, don't be concerned that you can't do it because that is sitting beautifully. Huh. Well, there you go. And away we go again. It just means I have to buy more thread. And I've started in the wrong spot. I don't have that. 
goodness, I've started in the wrong spot, guys. That's all right. We're going to snip that off. We're still finding our feet here. But if you get time, go and watch some videos. Just pick five, watch them. Most of them are only like 13 minutes long, which is good because I have the attention span of a gnat. I need to find this line. Gosh, I've already got it wrong. <sighs> Imagine me with a Sashiko Japanese traditional teacher. This fabric's flimsy. It's very soft. I'm used to having something a little bit firmer in my hands in the way of layers. Oh my goodness, this is going to take some time. This will be a good project just to throw in a bag and take with you on a holiday or something because you don't need to take much. Just some thread and away you go. Where those other two projects, I think, will be a little bit more. And it laid flat. Wow. I'm just going to pull that knot back a bit because I can see that it is, it is firm. So let's just give it a little bit of... little bit of easing off there so you don't want your fabric to be all crimpled up i'm sure i'll get my rhythm up she was really fast <laughs> this is going to take me forever that's okay that's okay I wonder if it'll fray. I hate when you've got a panel and the sides start fraying. So, yeah, I think it will. I'm going to need to whiz around that outer edge with something, I think. Maybe an overcast stitch just to... That's so good. There's a twist there. That's better. Oh, see, I can see a twist. How do I fix that? That's better. Okay. Oh, the stress of it. Do I want to do two threads? That's the question. What does one thread look like? I can see twists are going to happen and it's going to be stop and start for me. Let's do a little bit more and then we're going to make a decision on whether we do two threads or one thread. Do we want it fine or do we want it thick? Let's see how this goes. Oh, that didn't twist. I can still see that twist back there, but... Oh, gee, that's annoying me. I knew that might be a problem for me because, you know, it's going to happen. Maybe if I can pull... Oh. It's marginally better. Oops, now I've pulled it all. It certainly wouldn't win a it wouldn't win a competition on Sashiko stitching, I'm sure, because I do have a twist back there. 
not sure how I would fix it because I have a knot that has secured my needle within the piece. So where do I go now to fix that? Is it going to bother me? Probably. See, there's a, a slight twist. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I do like the thickness of it, but boy, I'm going to choose some thread. Very sharp needles too. There we go. Now, let's do it in one thread. So I'm going to find another needle. This is just a standard needle. It's not I've got a knot already. It's got a real silky feel to this thread. It's really nice. It's like I'm going to get more bang for my buck. Let's do... How are we going for time? I've been gas bagging away. Ah, oh, plenty of time. So let's... This needle is slightly longer, so I'd say I'd be able to get more fabric uh, onto my needle. I can see why they say the pearl cotton is a good solution because it'll give you, number eight, it'll give you a nice thick thread. You don't have to worry about this twisting of thread business. Mind you, I saw some pieces that she had done with um, number 12, which is finer, and oh my, they looked beautiful. This thread actually feels like it's number 12 to me compared to... It's definitely not a number eight. Yeah, this needle's a good length, to be honest, because I'm able to get a little bit further along and I've still got plenty for my fingers to hang on to. So I'm gonna use this needle. I think that other one's a little bit small for my big fingers. Completely different. Just going to pull that back. I think I like the single thread, guys. I think it's daintier. Let me put my glasses back on. Need my glasses off to do the work. Completely different. Like you can barely see where I've been. You know what I could do? What if I did a combination of both? Is that breaking a lot of rules? What if I was to do the main lines i don't know i hate how that's twisted and it's done it again here it's where i start again that must be why okay that's why they have a really long needle not a little needle because they can keep going the thread goes in beautifully side by side all the way through they pull it and it's done and they use a really big needle 
yeah, where I'm stopping, pulling the needle out, it's twisting, and then away I go again. Because where I've stopped and started, I've got my twist. That, I think, is the issue. Not 100% sure, but I reckon it might be. So let's snip that little knot. Can I get it out? Is it? Yep. Okay. Right. I guess the question is single thread or double? If this was folded in half, I'd have the length to get through in one movement. Okay. The double thread has me intrigued, to be honest. Technically, I think it's going to be a lot harder. So let's just knot a big guy. So she runs it together so that the two threads are side by side. I'm thinking I'm going to do double thread through the big long lines across the piece, double thread around the perimeter. So it's got a thick frame and a thick grid going through and then single thread for all of the delicate lace that goes in behind. So it'll look like it's um, a loom, I guess, with lace, lattice work, lace work. So she runs a finger along it so that the threads just want to sit side by side, getting all of those little loops out, twists. She did a bit of a flick with her fingers either side, just flicking it with a bit of tension on it. Okay, let's start again. So I've got a bigger needle. I may even be able to find myself an even bigger needle, which will probably make it a lot easier to to do i think that's the secret so let's have another go with the bigger needle Concentrating. So I think we have a plan. I think I know how I'm going to work this piece. Oh, I'm definitely going to use some colour in that cream animal panel. I'm thinking along the lines of the blues. Because I just do love my blues. Especially when it comes to this. We might bring some fabric into that piece, but I have to be careful. I don't want to overpower the print. If I start loading it up with a heap of fabric, it might look a bit much. And then the big cherry blossom panel, well, that's that'll be... Oh, I'm going to go nuts on that because I've got space. I can, We can pretend that the panel got torn and mend it with some morsels of fabric. Yeah, this is coming together really well. And because the needle is longer and the fabric is thin, it's stacking really, really well on my on my needle. So I'm still going, still stacking. Yeah, this is the trick. And I bet if I can get to the end without pulling my thread through yet, I think it'll sit perfectly. If it doesn't, that's it. That's the end of this double business. It's having enough room to keep my fingers on the needle. So it's a very lightweight fabric, this, which allows you to scrunch it up. Nearly there. 
but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I need to just turn my phone off. If, if, if this twists, if it twists, I'm going to abort <laughs> the idea of using two threads. But I think it'll be okay. Look at that. I've got so much fabric on that needle. I think we need to plan a road trip to Japan and do a course. Wouldn't that be nice? So stay tuned for updates on these videos. I'll be working my way through the three projects, exploring different ideas. Don't know what they are yet. Haven't thought that far. Coming to the end, I can't believe I've got all that fabric onto that needle. Unbelievable. This is exactly what she did. She worked her way right through. And I guess my off, off cut of thread will be fine for the shorter little areas. Because you're starting again. Ah, so she said never ever cross a stitch. So you sort of just got to adjust your stitch so that you just finish. And she said come through at the back and then tease the fabric off. Oh, look at this. Let's see. How, we, how do we go? That's it. Why do I feel so nervous? <laughs> All right, take pressure off the knot and ease the thread through the fabric. That's nice and flat. I've got a bump halfway along. There's a little, little thread standing up out of the two. I got it. Okay, so closer inspection. Have we twisted? No, no, nope. Slightly crooked, but not twisted. Oh, I did it. I did it. That's it. That's the secret. Don't... Um, stop and start because your thread will twist and then she ended off by coming back into the previous stitch just with the thread like so and doing a little slip knot there that's all she did remembering not to have pressure on the piece she left a little tail as well and then you're ready to go now that that little guy being that i've taken the big distance there with that there i think you'd save that little fellow for when you do some of these shorter shorter lines and then that single thread would be more than enough to get you there okay guys i just looked at the time and it is four minutes past which is fine we did it. We got a nice straight thick thread and it's not twisted. The secret being don't stop, keep going. So I think a slightly bigger needle would be good. I'll have a little look. If not, I might have to go and get one. Um, the double thread is definitely going to happen and I think I can pull it off without twisting. So that's the plan, guys. I will leave you in peace now. Let me zoom back up. And next time we catch up on the Sashiko projects, 
I'll show you where I'm at with all of the different things and um, yeah, we can work along on something Sashiko. All right, guys. Bye for now.